Well, there's another big story we're watching back here in the U.S. and that parents really need to hear about. A new COVID vaccine study out of New York State raising concerns this morning. It has to do with the Pfizer vaccine in kids ages 5 to 11. The study found the vaccine actually offered little protection from COVID infection. Uh, joining us now to break down what this means for kids and parents is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Um, Dr. Natalie. Good morning. Hey, doctor. It's so nice good to morning. have you here. Good to see you, too. So a lot of parents out there, obviously, what to do. The kids that they've gotten vaccinated or want to get vaccinated, break it down for us. Where are we right now with this? Right. Well, so for the understatement of the year, this is certainly not a headline that any parent wanted to hear this nope. morning. Um, and, and if you just look at the headline, you know that the Pfizer vaccine, age 5 to 11, is only 12% uh, protective against infection, definitely startling. But breaking down the numbers, protection from infection, remember that's just infection. Upper Ooh. respiratory tract symptoms fell from 68 to 12% oh, wow. over the study period. This is when Omicron was here. Mm -hmm. But the protection against severe disease or hospitalization, although it dropped not as steep, not as precipitously, that protection went from 100% to 48%. Now, inherent in this, is why did this happen? Well, the kids ages 5 to 11 got about a third of the dose wow. that their 12-year-old and upper counterparts got, right? That And that's a significant difference. So most experts, now, by the way, this study has not been peer-reviewed. You know, we feel really strongly about this, about the scientific rigor of this, have said, we need to analyze these data. We need to understand, is it really just the fact that they got a third of the dose? Mm -hmm. Is it the, the timing of the second dose? That's something else that we're also looking at. Is it, should it be three weeks? Should it be longer? And then it brings up the question, guys, what about a booster? I was going to ask, what right? about an additional right. dose? Exactly, exactly, Jacob. Well, adults, it's been recommended to get boosters. The protection in the older group, 12 to 17, also declined. So we right. may start to hear that this age group is also eligible for a third dose. Remember, this was just approved at the end of October. Mm -hmm. So they're at about four months right now. We'll see once the CDC actually looks at this data right. if they make a change in recommendations. Calvin got COVID after he was double vaccinated. Yep, but as I mean, did his symptoms were mild. We only knew because he also. got tested at school. So. Exactly. So we, we, let's understand. Remember, this is never was never meant to offer 100% right. protection against infection, but still held up very, very well against severe disease, even in this age group. What about masks now? Because the Ooh. CDC now saying we don't need them indoors. Yes. What? I know. It's well, most of the things, right? I guess yeah. it right. depends on in your... schools. Yeah. Right. Well, about about 70 percent of Americans, based on the new CDC criteria, would no longer need to be wearing masks indoors, and that is including our schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a parent. Many of us here at, at the at the desk are parents. What are we telling our children to do? Well, remember, what happens at the state level doesn't necessarily govern what happens at the local level, and so your school districts are probably in very open communication, right, with all students and and families about what the recommendation is. If masks are optional, which most places will probably do, they're not going to suddenly say you can't wear a mask. Right. They're going to say masks are optional. I've said what I've said from the very beginning. You as a family are going to make that decision mm -hmm. that's right for you based on your children's yeah. risk factors, who lives in, in, in the home. Jacob, you look like you have a... I was just going to say, what are you going to do? Well, uh, yeah, so my kids are are vaxxed. My my little one had COVID over Christmas, and she's going to get her booster. We live with my mom, who's right. almost 90 yeah, years old. Mm -hmm. um, but the vaccination rates in our community are very high. The transmission is very low. I'm going to allow them to go maskless, understanding that there is still a risk. Yeah. Good to know. You know, and, and honestly, this has been a political flashpoint from the beginning. I can't tell Americans what to do. Right. Um, this is every a decision that... Different. Every community is different mm -hmm. and every family My is different. My son yesterday went to school for the first time without his mask on. And how did he uh, feel? We asked him at the end of the day, we said, son, how was it? It was, it was magical. It was, yeah. Because <laughs> think about yeah, it. He happy. hadn't seen the kid. faces of his right. friends. My son was, was driving me to driving. Yeah. So yeah. that's what, and I said, I can't even picture what it's like to be in school without a mask on, you know, wow. for two years. I know, it's right? so yeah. emotional yeah. for yeah. the kids it's, to see each other's faces mm -hmm. and the teachers' faces. Mm -hmm. Right, they and remember, though, you can still wear a mask, especially if you're a teacher and yes. a staff member. One-way protection exactly. does. I was a little you. concerned because it seemed like he was especially excited about some of the girls in the class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. As Melvin. Whole, All right, Mr. Melvin. Whole, that, is that, that is a dad statement. talking right there. <laughs> Dr. Natalie, thank you. Thanks, Doctor. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.